In fact, according to a federal report, on any given night in 2022, there were over 580,000 homeless individuals nationwide. Of those, 28% involved families with children. Well, one ministry, the Dream Center of Jackson, Tennessee, is doing something about that. They're a Christ-centered homeless shelter meeting the physical and spiritual needs of women and their children. If you drive up and you drive up in your car, you're going to think you might be at Cracker Barrel because there's so many rocking chairs. Stephanie Lafoon is the capital campaign manager for the Dream Center of Jackson. And there's going to be a mom holding two kids because another mom's having a rough day. And she's trying to get out to work. And so she's got two other girls that are saying, hey, we'll take your kids. We'll keep them for the day. They do little contracts with each other. And, I mean, they... They work in community. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's, it's its own community here. And if you want help, you are 100% going to get help. We walked down one of the wide hallways that led us past a laundry room, library, and other spaces where women and children can get the help they need. Right, all the kiddos are in here. Okay. And tell me about this room. So this is our great space. Um, we actually can rent this out um, for somebody who has like a Boy Scout troop or whatever. We've had all different kinds of people that request to come in. And When the Dream Center was built in 2023, a lot of attention was given to building bedrooms that were not only beautiful, but also designed for the needs of the women. One of the hardest things for the women um, are just abuse from their past. And a lot of them were molested when they were children. Um, and one of the things that they, we talked through with the architects was that they simply did not want um, to have a closet that had doors. A lot of women have been sexually abused and their children um, in closets, in closet space. And so they requested that the closets not have any doors on them so that they could see everything and feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And that's just something that we take for granted at night when we hop into our warm bed and, mm -hmm. you know, have a great night of sleep that um, that's not that's not how everyone lives. Yeah. Yeah. It did not start out as women and children. It started out with Rita and Katrina, the storms that hit. Gail Gustafson is the executive director of the Dream Center of Jackson. And, and just started out as a place of refuge for those people that have lost their homes in the storms. And then as it sort of people started getting their homes back and moving back in, in where they were supposed to be, then it became like a shelter for Everybody, men, women, children. Um, in 2006, it became just women and children. It's pretty crazy how many homeless people are living here in Jackson. And, and by homeless, you're, you're not just saying, okay, they're living out in the woods or they're living in a tent, but you're talking about women and children that are couch surfing, you know, from one place to the other. You know, they can stay here, Dave. These kids never know if they're going to be spending the night in the same place twice or not. And, and so we count that as homelessness as well. Would you say the situation has, has gotten worse? In Absolutely. Since COVID, the situation ha has probably uh, tripled. Talk about the power of the gospel a little bit, because this is a Christ-centered organization. And you're meeting physical needs, you're meeting emotional needs. But how have you seen the love of Christ transform people when it is offered to them and they receive it? Well, you know, there's nothing like getting a, a dose of the Holy Ghost. I'm just going to tell you, okay? And, and, and you can see it. You know, a lot of them are very skeptical of us because, first of all, we tell them, hey, I am going to love you. You know, I'm not here to be your friend. I'm not here to be your mom. I'm here to speak truth in you, which comes from God's holy word. And I'm going to love you. And as long as you're accepting of that love and you want to change your life, you can just do incredible things. You can do anything your heart desires. And come up, some of them come in very skeptical because people that have told them they love them in the past have hurt them. Mm -hmm. You know, 92% of these women have been sexually molested before the age of 18. 
It used to be 14% of the kids. Now it's 65% of children that come in here have been touched uh, uh, in a sexual manner. And it does something to you. It does something to your relationships with people, your lack of trust. And here I'm telling them that I have this great big God that can help them and change them And everything that they need is in this book called the Bible, and it's for any circumstance in your life. And uh, But when that light comes on, I had a girl come in my office last night, for example, and she she just told me, you know, it's been sort of a struggle for her. First of all, she don't like to read, okay, because she's not a good reader, but... I got her a children's action Bible out of her library, and so I told her she's been having a little trouble with her kids, you know, and their respect for her, and so I said, you sit down every night, and you read a story to them, and then you talk about it in this action Bible. She said, Miss Gail, I can't believe how good I can understand that action Bible. And she said, the kids are asking me questions. And she said, I I just really feel like my journey has just begun. And I want to get baptized. And, and you know, and my kids are, are praying at night after we finish. And for me, that's what it's all about. And when you see that light come on, for example, Jamie, when you see that light come on, there's nothing like it because there's no going back. Jamie is a past resident of the Dream Center of Jackson and now comes back to volunteer. um, I was homeless since I was 18 years old. Um, I was in and out of jail. Um, I was on drugs really bad. I think um, I was just really trying to kill myself. Basically, it got to the point to where I just every day wanted to die. I'd lost my kids. I'd lost custody of all three of my kids. I couldn't see them or talk to them. And um, I did. I I used drugs to try to kill myself. And a lot of times, to be honest, jail saved me from death, you know. Um, So it it really got to the point when I would go to jail, even though I hated it, sometimes I would pray for it because I knew, you know, I wasn't going to make it through the night if I didn't go. And um, I was in and out of toxic relationships, being abused. And um, so... uh, the last time that I went to jail, I just, I, I was sick of it. And I, I told God that I would do whatever he told me to do if he would just change my life. And um, so I, I asked the judge to send me to rehab. And uh, I had requested one in Memphis and because I'd heard about it. But then I got there and, you know, I kept telling him, like, I can't. I can't do this without God. Like I, I, I had, I'd been raised in church, but I, I didn't understand that I could have a relationship with God. But I knew well enough to know that He could help me through this. And so the place where I was at, they wouldn't even take me to the library to get a Bible. They wouldn't get me one. Uh, so I was just like, I left, and that was against the court order. But when I left there, I gave birth to my little boy, and I didn't have anywhere to go. I didn't have anybody to call. I was in a hospital by myself with a bunch of people I did not know, you know, the doctors and stuff, and and I was scared, and I was alone, and I cried out to God and asked Him what I had to do to keep my baby, and He told me to go to the Dream Center, and so I came to the Dream Center. I didn't know anybody here. I didn't know anything about the Dream Center. Um, And I came (laughs) late, so it's by the grace of God that I got in. (laughs) I know what He told me to do, and He told me to come. And um, so anyway, I filled out the application, and Miss Gail told me that she would take me. And so they, at the time, we were staying in houses, and we went to the house where we were staying at, where I would be staying at. And when they took me to my room, uh, that was the first time in my life that I had ever felt safe, that um, that I had, that I knew I was going to be okay. 
<laughs> and I didn't know for sure because, like Ms. Gale said, we have, you know, we have a lot of trust issues, so we have trouble knowing if we're going to be able to trust them. And, um, but I did know that I felt safe. Jamie's journey toward recovery wasn't an easy one. It took a lot of tough love from Gail. She kept telling me every day, Jamie, read your Bible. I'm like, Miss Gail, I'm having such a hard time. I need you to help me this. She'd say, Jamie, read your Bible. She told me every day for eight months to read my Bible. And I would not do it. She told me, she said, you got to leave. You can't, you're, you're just fighting with everybody and everything. You're, you're not trying. You got to leave. So... I was like, please take me back. I'll read my Bible, I promise. And so she did take me back. And I started reading my Bible every single day. And something changed. Something inside of me, I don't know, in like a month or two, something inside of me started to change. People didn't run out of the room when I walked in. <laughs> People could talk to me. And it could be just a civil conversation. It could, I mean, it just transformation happened and it happened here at the dream center by God with the guidance of the staff and um it changed the whole trajectory of my life and the lives of my kids and um now I'm an office manager for a company um I work for a Christian and uh that's a big deal to me and uh, all my kids go to church, and I get to see and talk to my kids. Um, they come stay with me a lot, especially during the summer. I just bought a house. Um, my journey with Jesus has been the most amazing time of my life. Everything that has happened in my life and that I have is because of God. And it has been just, I never knew what it was like to have joy I mean, I had good days. I, mostly I had the worst days that anybody's ever had, ever. But now I have these amazing days. And even when they're not amazing, I still have the joy of the Lord. It's still the most amazing thing. I have peace. I have comfort. I have a friend in Jesus. He's my friend. He's my father, and I love him. The most humbling thing that a woman can do is to come into here and fill out that application and admit, I have nobody. And they make the best disciples of anybody because they have nobody but Jesus. We expect Jesus just to be there in the church and us not do anything, not to pray that His Spirit would come, not to pray that he would bring people that are hurting and broken, because that's just what the church is for. But the church has forgot that in these days. The church thinks, oh, I'm going to do my hour and move on. But, but we're called to build the kingdom. And I think that's where the church has lost their perception. It's about building his kingdom, not our kingdom. Between June 2022 and July of 2023, the Dream Center of Jackson served 125 women and 190 children, daily shared the gospel, moved 114 clients into permanent housing, helped 87 women find a job, and most importantly, celebrated 68 professions of faith. Gail Gustafson said that while it's easy to get cynical about those who are homeless, we have to guard ourselves against assumptions that might not be true. When I first took over this ministry, I started serving on the board in 2005, but I became the director in 2008. And we were in an old hospital building, and I thought, you know what, we're going to clean this place up. That's going to be our, our, my first thing, is we're just going to clean the place up. Everybody, you got to make your bed every day. Keep your room clean. Well, all the girls would come to me, and they say, well, Kayla doesn't make her bed. And so I took a flat sheet and a fitted sheet and a pillowcase, and Kayla's 18 years old, got two children from her crack mother uh, drug dealers. And she had this fitted sheet and she had no earthly idea of what to do with it because nobody had taught her. I said, Kayla, have you never made a bed? She said, Miss Gail, I've never had a bed. And so don't take it for granted that everybody knows what we know. And, and so a lot of times we have to start 
from the very ground up. You know, you tell a grown woman, you have to brush your teeth every day because nobody's ever told her that. Don't take it for granted that everybody is just hopeless and everybody wants to be this way. Some people are just never taught or given the opportunity to know what we know and to change their lives. The Dream Center of Jackson is in great need of prayer, financial support, and volunteers. For information on how you can help, visit dreamcenterjackson.com.